Hi everyone, welcome to Urban Outdoor Adventures. We're at a Bowmanville today. We're going for early fall, King Salmon. Stay tuned. Urban Outdoor Adventures. Teaching anglers and outdoor enthusiasts when, where, and how. Urban Outdoor Adventures, sponsored by Prince Craft Boats. The more you know, the better we look. Rapala, crafted from experience. Columbia Sportswear, avoid road rage, stay out of cars. Hi everyone, welcome to Urban Outdoor Adventures. We're down here in Bowmanville today out of Port Darlington. I got my good mate Jen here with us. You came out last year I did. for the silver salmon. Today we're going to be in a bit closer going for the darker fish, the fish that are ready to uh, go up the creeks and spawn. It's been a funny year, the weather's been up and down. Uh, we've been cursed with wind a few times trying to get out, but hopefully we'll get into some of those big fish today. So stay tuned, we're heading out for pre-spawn salmon on Lake Ontario. This week on Urban Outdoor Adventures, Sean and Jen are fishing for late summer salmon on Lake Ontario. Sean and Jen headed out of the public launch on Bowmanville Creek in Port Darlington. This convenient launch is located approximately one kilometer upstream from Lake Ontario. Port Darlington is a mere 40 minutes from Toronto and only one and a half hours from Kingston, Ontario. Bowmanville Creek is just one of the many tributaries scattered along the north shore of Lake Ontario, which hosts good spawning runs of Chinook salmon in the late summer and early fall. Today the pair are targeting pre-spawn fish that are staging out in front of the creek mouth. At this time of the year you don't need to drive far to experience some explosive salmon action. Fish can be readily taken in depths anywhere from 10 to 40 feet. When heading out at first light you may very well observe numerous fish breaching the surface. Even if you're not fishing this can be an exciting spectacle. Fishing these shallow depths for salmon requires an angler to be versatile and above all prepared. Make sure that you load your boat with a good assortment of salmon baits and ways to present them. From one day to the next, the fish may require different presentations to attract hits. At this time of year, the weather can be unpredictable. Make sure that you pack rain gear and life preservers on board for everyone. Lake Ontario can be very unforgiving water. Please execute extreme caution and always carry a cell phone or radio. This week's target species is Chinook Salmon. Other popular sport fish species available on the open waters of Lake Ontario are Coho Salmon, Rainbow Trout, Brown Trout, Lake Trout, and Walleye. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. Yeah, it's a fish. There we go, Jen. I got him. Yeah, you fight this one, I'm gonna clear the other rod, okay? You, good thing about coming in tight like this when the fish are spawning, they're generally adult fish, so the average size is generally going to be pretty big. There he is, there he goes. Okay. He's jumping, he's on the surface there, Jen. Okay. Cool. How's he feel? I'm just waiting, my arm is seizing up again. <laughs> Does he feel mad at you? Uh, now he is. Now he's not. There he is. Oh, he's not ready yet. My oh, arm they have a line there. <laughs> he can't reel anymore. That's yeah, okay. Keep Close a hold up. of him. He's your fish. You've got to land him. All right. Okay, we're good. Oh, okay. Don't reel up any higher. Okay. We're going to try and scoop him now with the net. Okay, I'm going to step in the back here. Okay, bring him up. We got him. There we go. <laughs> Yay. That's a lot of fun, eh? Look at yeah, that, the bait just fell out. You can see, jointed crankbaits. Early fall, great. I actually could not turn it anymore. Like, I had to take a rest. They're hard. All right, Jen, let's get this guy back. 
And uh, we'll save the pictures for the bigger one, all right? Okay. You gonna catch the fish? All right. <laughs> there you go. Off the back. And down it goes. If ever the fish do come back up, just go back sometimes with the net and give them a poke. They'll often take right off. Yay! One fish today. I didn't even get a chance to get that second. Uh, there he goes. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to get that second rod back out. And uh, I'll get you to just stay on the wheel if you don't mind, Jen. These waves are picking up. We've got a bit of a storm blowing in here. And uh, it's not looking very inviting, but if the fish are biting, we're out here. You can see the lightning going off in the sky over here. But I'm thinking it's actually blowing past us here. Or I'm hoping it's blowing past us. We've got the downriggers set fairly shallow. We've noticed a lot of fish jumping on the surface here this morning. And uh, these shallow presentations, keeping them away from the boat, really can pay off this time of the year. It's actually a little bit early for these fish to be coming in, but we were out the other day fishing deeper water and getting a lot of small fish. We heard a rumor, went on the internet, did a little bit of research on some of the message boards for the fishing reports, and uh, we heard that they were getting fish out here fairly shallow. And sure enough, here they are. We're using two presentations here. Cut bait on long leads off the back of the downriggers and jointed crankbaits off the planer boards off to the side. Shallow running crankbaits. Okay, I'm just going to grab this net see if I can get this guy in the boat. I got him. There we go. Nice. Oh, a little bit bigger. Yeah, Not, uh, bigger. As you can see, these fish are really starting to get dark now. They're in a pre-spawn situation. I think we got him. There we go. Hooks out. That is a lot darker. Yeah, those fish last year when we were out in open yeah. water were really silver. Yeah. This time of the year. And so how come it's this time of year that makes them darker? They go through a total metamorphosis. They're, uh, the females don't get the hook like the males do, but the males will actually start getting a big kipe on the jaw. Yeah. They'll get a hump on the back slightly. Uh -huh. This is just their spawning colors. They oh, totally okay. change color and uh, they get a heavy slime yeah. on them to protect them when they go uh -huh. up the creeks. It's gonna get this girl back in the water here. There she goes. Yep. All right, man. Slimy. Good job. I uh, gotcha. <laughs> Making me kiss that fish. I'll get you covered. <laughs> Payback from last year. Oh, there we go. We'll keep an eye on that planer board there again. <laughs> Took us a while to find the last one. Here you go, Jen. Okay. Put the rod in there. Cool. Okay, reel it, reel it, reel it. Don't give me any slack. Reel, 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 reel. Is he gone? Oh. Where's the rod? You can hear the thunder going. We lost that fish. So uh, I think we're going to head in for a little bit and come back out when the lightning and thunder's gone. You lost that fish on me, Jen. We came out this morning, it was cloudy, overcast, windy, ended up we had a thunderstorm, we got absolutely drenched, we ended up going in uh, to get you changed and dry you out a little bit. I always wear these quick dry pants here, these ones actually have zip off legs so if it gets hot in the day you can take them off and turn them into shorts. This material is simply fantastic, it'll actually dry out very quickly. The shirt's made of the same material, it'll also protect you from UV rays and uh, certainly saved me today because I'm not sitting around here with a wet bum like you are. Like myself for like eight hours now, I've had a wet butt. Unfortunately, Jen didn't heed my warnings that we might be getting wet today. My advice is don't wear cotton and heavy cotton clothing if you're gonna be going out in the rain. Get yourself some of this quick dry material. You'll be glad you did. All right, this one feels a little heavier, Jen. Okay, so I won't lose it this time. Oh, look at him go. Look at him go. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, we knew they were here. They were okay. jumping all over the place. This came right off the camera, this one. 
I told you you should have kept yes. looking at that uh, video yes, camera see, there. I should have. Green and silver flasher with cup bait. Oh, that'll be too much towards us, I think. He's off. Gone? Oh, we lost him. I don't know how they do it, but they get off. And uh, that's just salmon fishing for you. That one was your fault. Yeah, it was my <laughs> fault. These hooks are razor sharp, one important factor. We still lost that fish there, but to help put the odds in your favor, make sure that you sharpen your hooks regularly and keep them sticky sharp. That was a good fish, Jen. Well, we'll get it back down there. What we're doing here is working back and forth by the mouth of Bowmanville Creek here. And you'll see on the graph here, that we've got a lot of plot trails where we're just working our way back and forth along a stretch of water, anywhere between 20 and 30 feet of water. And we've got fish we're marking down near the bottom here. We've got our lines set at 11 and 13 feet. Those are the two downrigger lines that we have set, about 100 feet back. We've got the planer boards off to the side. What we've done is we've tried to stagger our lines to keep them above the fish. I got a digital video camera here. And uh, what we have on the downrigger on the right here is a camera actually on the cable. And the, the signal actually comes right up through the middle of the cable. I'm going to plug it in. You want to come and see how, uh, how it looks down there? Just got to make sure it's plugged in here. And if you look here, you see? Oh, yeah. See the flasher spinning mm -hmm. around there? Yeah, that's amazing. I'll let you sit there and look at this for a while because if a fish comes up, you'll actually see him come up yeah. and hit that. What we've had to do, because we're running the camera now, is I've actually shortened the lead here a little bit, because obviously before running at 100 feet back, you're not gonna see that flasher all that way back. So I brought it back to about six feet, just so uh, Jen can sit here and uh, keep an eye and see if we get any fish. I'll put that under there. You can swivel your seat around. And you can watch and see if any fish come up and hit that. Well spotted. There you go, I didn't even see that one go. Here you go. You got your uh, no. belt on? No. You want it? Yes, please. So much nicer having more room in the boat. It is, this is awesome. I like it. You came out last year in the uh, the old blue boat. So. You still there? Yeah. Okay, keep it tight. I'm seizing again. So if he's not very big, that means that I'm a weakling. Yeah. Most of the fish that are staged in here are adult fish, so they're going to be generally quite big. Yeah. Oh, he's okay. Let me get the net. Okay. Coming under the boat here, I think. There he is. Oh, yeah, he's a nice fish. Okay, keep him away from that line if you can. Okay. Like, put, what you do is you put side strain on the fish. Oh, so okay. Put the rod down and go like that. Okay. okay. See there? Okay, now straight up. Yeah. Bring him towards me. Ah, we got him. All right, you did that one all by yourself. Yeah, that's, that's a great. beautiful fish. Yeah, that's good. All right. Way bigger than the first one. I'm gonna I got. get him here. I'll get the pliers and we'll get the hook out. Okay. And I'll get to get a picture of this fish yeah, for you. Yeah, for sure. You did a good job Thanks. there. Excellent. That's oh. way bigger than the first one. Jointed crankbaits for late summer. Early fall salmon, you can't beat them. Okay, so you're with your right hand, okay? Yes. You're gonna go in under the gill plate here. Yeah. But don't touch these rakers. And why don't you touch those rakers in there? Because that'll hurt the fish. Oh, okay. So put your finger under here, yeah. under the gill plate here. Yeah. And then you're gonna pick them up, okay. and then you're gonna support the body weight with your other hand like this, okay? okay? You got it? Mm-hmm. Okay, hang on. You get a picture. <laughs> CPR. Brought to you by Nikon Digital Cameras. Okay. All right. Okay. Smile, Jen. Say salmon. Salmon. Perfect. Just one more quick one. Okay. Say salmon. Salmon. Got it. Ew. One more. Perfect. Okay, Jen, let me take that from you and we'll get him back in the water. Let him go. So as you can see, Jen cut her finger here. These fish do have teeth. And uh, you got to be careful not to put your hand too far up into that mouth. Lesson learned. We're just actually heading over to pick the planer board up here. As I mentioned, they do pop off when you get a fish on, so keep an eye on them. You've got a little orange flag on here. What I'll generally do is circle around 
and just go by with the net here and uh, just scoop this little puppy up and we're ready to get back fishing again. It's time now for the Angler's View, brought to you by Pure Energy Rechargeable Batteries. Jen's 25-pound salmon hit on one of the two planer board rods just west of the creek mouth. Let's dissect some of the factors involved here. Salmon were suspended at various depths over 24 feet of water. The lake bottom was flat and featureless and offered no real structural elements. Sean marked small scattered schools of bait fish. Most of the larger fish that were marked on the graph were below or adjacent to the bait. The strike zone in this scenario is wide open. Running a variety of baits and presentations through these areas at staggered depths and lead lengths will help increase your odds of finding active fish. This particular fish hit a size 13 jointed crankbait in the color orange. The lure dives to approximately 6 feet below the surface and offers an amazing action. The bait was trolled 100 feet behind a small planer board, which was let out 40 to 50 feet beside the boat. Try using a 6-foot fluorocarbon leader between your lure and mainline for an additional stealthy presentation. GPS trolling speeds were 2.3 to 2.9 miles per hour. The split-screen GPS sonar allowed Sean to mark the locations of the bait and fish directly onto his GPS plot trail as they appeared on his sonar. This allowed the boat to be navigated extremely accurately over and through productive areas repeatedly. By only fishing areas that were holding fish, the pair dramatically increased their odds of a hookup. Long leads are key when fishing shallow salmon, especially in clear water. By getting your presentations away from the engine noise and shadow of your boat, you are far less likely to spook the fish. For more information on subjects featured in today's show, log on to our website. This downrigger, this black thing here, is actually a temperature sensor. Cable comes up through the downrigger into the unit and reads off on a graph over here. A lot of people think surface temperature is the only temperature you need to know. That's wrong. Temperature down 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet can vary quite a bit. What prompted us to come down here to Bowmanville was the fact that we were fishing in the same sort of depths in Pickering and we're getting readings of 68 degrees. Out here we're getting about 58, 59. The fish in the cooler temperatures are going to feed a lot more actively. There we go, Jen. I'm certain you take years off my life. Just drags out a bit tight here. Yeah. Want to take him? Yeah. yeah. It's a good heavy fish, so. Okay, okay you got to put your hand up here, brace it. Yeah. Okay, just keep weight on right now. I think he's pulling. Whenever the drag goes, don't reel, okay? Just, just leave there it. There you go. Okay. Oh, I see. Out there. We've had a fun day out here today, but I tell you, the weather's been up and down. We got soaked this morning, and uh, it's been pretty consistent, though. I think on every second pass through here, we've had a fish. I can see out there. I'm not going to bring the other lines in yet. I'll see how, we'll see how big this fish is. So much nicer having uh, a lot of room to yeah, move around in. Eh? That boat we were out in last year was uh, quite a bit smaller. More room for me to fall? Yeah. Sit back there, relax, wait for me to grab the rod. Yeah. Eh? Then you go fight the fish. <laughs> We're using our graph in combination with our uh, GPS here. We've got a combined unit. And what that's allowing us to do is to go back around these same areas and go over where we've had fish. We'll mark on where we get a big fish on. And we'll just keep circling those areas back and forth. We're only working probably about a 200 yard across span here, maybe 300 yards, and just working our way back and forth, up and through, zigzagging. It's a nice fish. Okay, lift it up, reel down, reel down. Now pull up, oh, go, go up to the flasher. Okay, see if we can get him closer. <laughs> He's got some power. Wait, I'm gonna go this way. This way, yeah, now reel up, reel up, get the line up. Wait. <laughs> Okay, if you can lift his head now, I can probably scoop him. Okay? Yeah, there we go. All right, I knocked oh, you over there. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Good job, you did that yeah. all on your own. 
That's what. I'll tell you what, come out late summer, early fall when the fish are staging like this, you're going to have a blast. That's a dynamite looking That's fish you got there. I'm going to get the hooks out of that. We're using 30 pound monofilament here today. So I just clip it into the planer board here at the front and the back clip, right in the back of the clips. That way when a fish hits, it comes off nicely. And what I'll do is just let it out to the side here like this, out past the other rod, just so they don't get tangled up. Then I'll start letting the free spool mode go and let the line drift out. I'll set it in the holder. I'll let it run back anywhere between 75 to 100 feet. Then I'll engage it and that planer board will go out away from the boat. And right now I'm running about a 75, 80 foot lead behind the planer board. And I've got a fluorocarbon leader up to the bait itself. I'm going to start off by showing you the baits that we've been using here today. Good old jointed crankbait. Orange color, it's been working very well today. This is the size 13. You might also want to try these holographic spoons. They'll work very well down on the downriggers. We're also using cut bait here. Herring strips fished on these teaser heads behind these silver and green flashes. And most importantly of all, make sure these hooks are razor sharp. Get yourself a good reel that'll hold a good capacity of 20 to 30 pound monofilament. I prefer to use a 10 foot rod. I've got a 10 foot uh, medium heavy action, but I like that extra length and it's got a fast tip on it. We'll be using two totally different aspects of salmon fishing here. We'll be using planer boards to get our lures out away from the boat. These were the shallower diving baits that the uh, jointed crank baits use the planer boards to get those out away from the boat. And of course, we've been using the good old downriggers here. We've been running really long leads back, uh, up to 100 feet behind the cannonball in these shallow waters that we're fishing. This particular model actually has a camera on it. Uh, it's quite exciting when you're actually running short leads. It'll allow you to see those fish actually come up and hit the lure. It's got a bit of a thicker cable on it, this model, because the actual camera cable goes through the middle of the downrigger cable. So what I'll do on this model is I'll run a heavier cannonball. This particular model is a chrome-colored model. I like these. They attract the fish, and this thing weighs in at 15 pounds, and that keeps that cable running nice and vertical for me. So I think if you try what we have here and what we've been using today, you see that it works. Get out there. Give it a try. You're going to have a lot of fun. Don't forget to log on to our website and post your fishing, camping, and outdoor pictures on the CPR section of our message board. If your picture is chosen as a runner-up, you could receive a brand new digital camera. Post your pictures today. You might just be our next winner. Well, that's all we have time for this week. We've had a good day out here in Bowmanville. I suggest coming down, giving it a try. We're only about 20 minutes from Pickering, probably uh, 40 minutes from downtown Toronto. And uh, great fish in it. It was a good day. Thanks for having me. A lot of fun. It was fun again. Thank you, ma'am. And you landed some two crazy, fish all yeah, by yourself. Two fish, some crazy weather. We're going to keep fishing here for a while. The sun's come out now. We've dried out a little bit. My name's Sean Rickard. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week for yet another Urban Outdoor Adventure. Urban Outdoor Adventures, sponsored by Lakeport. Great beer, fair prices. Nikon Canada, simply better pictures. Pure Energy, the number one rechargeable battery in Canada. This is how you fish. Going disco fishing. Oh, fish on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh,